Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. Uh, 6.30, and I'm seeing for elementary, uh, Cheryl Charles, Lynn Morgan, Jessa West Clark. For Rockingham, I'm seeing Jason, Terry, and Priscilla. Um, for the high school, uh, so far, I believe I saw Molly in the room, am I correct? And um, George Smith is here. So we, we have uh, three members from the elementary, three members from Rock, uh, two members from the high school at this point. Am I missing anyone? Looks like Jason Benson's here too, David. Okay, I have, I have uh, Jason on my uh, list of others. And I'm uh, here. Oh, thank you, thank you, Brenda. All right. Okay. Um, besides Jason, are, are there any non-voting members here tonight? Well, pick I'm up here. here. Uh, Jack David, Ryer. Yeah. David, am I a voting member tonight? I would like you to be a voting member tonight because Deb um, has a, a board of abatement meeting and she will be showing up late. Um, I did email her about that and she expressed no objection to having you vote her proxy. I expect okay. that to be here when she can get here. Thank you. Okay, 632. Um, it's Wednesday, October 14th, and this is a Zoom meeting of the Wyndham Northeast Supervised Reunion Board, and the WNESU board will come to order. Um, adjustments to the agenda, uh, Superintendent Pratt. I have none. Okay, are there other adjustments, anyone? Okay, um, a small adjustment, and that is uh, under reports um, uh, 5A5, uh, five, which is business office reorganization. Um, uh, Flora, I believe, has her staff here tonight, and um, I would like to make, uh, have staff members make brief introductions uh, before we get down to communication and public comment. So, uh, Flora, if you're ready, um, I would like to turn it over to you to um, uh, show us uh, who, who we have and let them tell us a little bit about what they do. Okay, so um, I guess I'll start with our new OB, um, Marlene. Are you here, Marlene? <laughs> If you're here, Marlene, just tell us a little bit about um, what your responsibilities are. And I can't count that high because I only have 10 fingers. How long you've been working in the office? Uh, this is my 18th year um, as accounts payable specialist. And pretty much all I do is pay bills for all the schools and I process professional development. Um, and that's about it. But it's a lot. I see your warrants constantly, Marlene. It's Pardon? A, I said, I, I see your warrants constantly. It's a big job. And yes, I'm quite certain that your, your boards and your superintendent and your business manager greatly appreciate your work. Who's next, Flora? So I have um, Jason Bishop. He is one of our new um, employees. He is on payroll. Tell us about payroll, Jason. Um, well, basically, um, I'm working with Shauna right now, uh, just learning the ropes, start to finish, and uh, just trying to get things done as accurately and as uh, timely as possible, basically. Well, that's great. Any uh, relevant previous experience you'd like to share with us? Um, I've had a, a couple of different uh, jobs, not necessarily in payroll specifically, but um, I've got a lot of different uh, experience working a few temporary accounting jobs right when I got out of school. And then most recently I was working at a uh, an asphalt testing supplier 
um, doing some AP, a little bit of collections, and kind of just basically wearing whatever hat they needed me to. So, well, well, well. Thank you for taking the job. Um, payroll is obviously extremely important to us, and and timely and accurate payroll is what keeps a lot of people who work for us happy. Um, I think they're happy anyway, but it certainly enhances uh, their enjoyment of the job when they get paid timely. So thank you. Uh, who else we got, Flora? So we have Shauna, who is um, our new senior accountant, and she used to do payroll for us. So she's the one that is um, training Jason right now. Shauna, can you tell us a little bit about uh, what your previous responsibilities have been and uh, what you're doing now. And gosh, you've been in the district for several years now yourself, haven't you? Yep. I've been here for maybe like a little over four years. Um, I was doing a lot of food service accounting and special education accounting. I'm still doing food service accounting. Um, that had not gone away. Um, but now additionally, um, in, in addition to training Jason, I am working with Flora on getting e-finance um, updated and the cash flows in there, um, all the banking info, and just keeping track of all of that. Well, well, thanks, it's important work. And I think we all know that. Uh, Flora, who's next? So we have Joellen, she is our human resources um, specialist. Hi Joellen, wherever you are. Hey there, how are you? I'm up here. Great. <laughs> Is that the same office you were in before, or is that a different office? I can't. Right? Doesn't it look great, David? We've. It does. Um, That's why I don't know. We've got new desks, and we were able to take a little bit of time at night to reconfigure everything and just make it a little bit more pleasant to be in. So the offices, if you get a chance, you've got to come up. They look phenomenal. We feel so great in them now. Good. Uh, and Joellen, if you would just just remind us again what your uh, current responsibilities are. I started in uh, uh, January 13th and I'm doing HR and benefits. Um, I was doing some of the payroll reporting and I'm working on training Jason and we'll be moving that as well over there so that everything is timely. Um, but I'm onboarding people, working with offboarding people. We've got um, some big changes with our benefits coming up because of the VHI changes coming. So I'm working on the new enrollments and all kinds of fun stuff. Un unwind an acronym for me, would you, Joellen? VHI. <laughs> VHI, Vermont Employment Health uh, Initiative. Okay, thank you. And am I correct, Joellen, that that is actually um, a collaboration between the boards and the uh, teachers associations? Um, I believe there is a collaboration with that. Okay, well, thank you, Joellen, and good luck with your new responsibilities, and thank you for being diligent with your old responsibilities. Thank Laura, you, David. Laura, now? And the last one, and most important one, <laughs> we have Frank Biddy. He is our new accounting clerk. Hi, Frank. Hello. Tell us, tell us about your uh, responsibilities, would you please? Sure, so... Um, so far this first week, I've been uh, learning the ropes of eFinance Plus, um, been reviewing the information on there and making sure it matches our records, updating information as needed. Um, the first big project I was working on was uh, with Joellen, we were doing an audit of the benefits for this past year, seeing um, who, if anyone, over or underpaid. Um, and eventually I'll be helping Jason with timesheets. Great, that's great. Um, well, thank you so much for um, joining up. Um, I think Flora is a pretty good judge of talent. Um, I know that Chris Pratt is because he hired her and um, I wish you all of the luck with your responsibilities going forward. I have actually had a few pieces of your uh, uh, work output uh, uh, show up in my inbox over the last few days, so I know you're working. Um, Flora, um, thanks for introducing your staff. Um, everyone is welcome to hang for as long as I can stand it. 
uh, at this meeting, but um, I thought it was important that uh, both board members as well as um, our public had an opportunity to see who's doing the work up there on the second floor at uh, 25 uh, Cherry Street. And we will, of course, come back later in the meeting and discuss the business office reorganization and um, the steps that you've taken to uh, improve the workflow. So once again, thanks to all of your staff and you as well, Flora, but if you would be so kind, stick around, Flora. <laughs> Thank okay. you. That, that brings us down to communication and public comment. Uh, Chris, do we have any communication and or public comment tonight? I don't see any as of yet, um, but let me, uh, let me turn it on. Lynn, Dr. Carey is monitoring the chat, so she'll keep an eye on that. And if anything comes up, she'll let us know. Okay. There's, fair, there's fair nothing enough. in the chat right now. I'm sorry, I missed that. There's nothing in the chat right now. Thanks. Okay. All right. Um, let us then. Uh, David. Yes, Priscilla. David, point of order. Uh, if there's nothing, then that's to be turned off because we voted that it would be off after the public and com communication. So it needs to be turned off until we get to questions. I, I believe that uh, my colleague from Rockingham is correct based on the motion we've had. You know the last the week. public chat is not turned on. It's only to, to Chris and Lynn, Priscilla. That's how it's been since the start. Yeah, but, but that's not, no, that we did not vote to do that because that is violation. Because then you have information going to just certain areas. You don't have it coming to the board. All right. Um, with, with the board's uh, acquiescence, I would like to move down to item four, which is to approve the minutes of September 30. I'd like to have a motion on those minutes, please. Make a motion that we accept them as written. Okay, uh, thank you, Lynn. And do I have a second? I have a second from Cheryl. Um, I presume everyone's had an opportunity to have a look at the minutes. Are there any corrections? I hear none. Um, in that case, um, I'm gonna roll call um, the board. And uh, Cheryl Charles? Um, I approve the minutes. Thank you. Um, Lynn? Approve. Board. Thank you. Jessa? Yes. Thank you. Uh, George. Yes. Priscilla. Yes. Jason Terry. Aye. Thank you. Um, Molly, how do you vote? Yes. All right, Brenda. Yes. Okay, you've approved the uh, minutes of September 30. Uh, reports, superintendent and assistant superintendent. Chris, I think this is your uh, moment to shine. All right, well, good evening, everyone. I'm gonna jump right into it. Um, I did share with you, uh, I don't know if you call it a, an update or my notes for tonight's meeting, but I'm gonna kind of brush through some of the, uh, the more um, broad stuff that I feel the, the public should know about as well. So the first thing I wanna discuss is um, the board has asked to report out on new enrollment um, by schools. So currently have now, um, we have Bellows Falls Union High School has a, the new enrollment is up to 11 students. The middle school is up to eight. Westminster has 15 new students. Athens Grafton has eight. Saxons River with nine. Central Elementary with 17. And pre-K will have 11 new students. So we're up to about a total of 71 new enrollments um, throughout Wyndham Northeast. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, off the top of my head or right now, I couldn't tell you what those reasons are for them, um, the new enrollments. I'm sure COVID has something to do with it, um, but we do have 71 new students um, who are with us or will be joining us shortly. Moving on to transportation. Good news, Chris, that's good news. Yes, I think it's very good news. Uh, um, we'll take 71 students. Um, Anytime, like I said, I wish I could share with you the actual reasons why, but I'm sure they're they're various on, on what they are. So I'm going to move on to transportation. Right now, we're operating 11 buses out of the 18 that we have. 
Um, students have all been given assigned seats. So we have um, assigned seats to all, any students who are currently riding the bus. Um, buses are continued to be cleaned after each run um, in the morning and at and in the end of the day at the afternoon um, before the next day. Currently right now, we're having all the cameras inspected on the buses um, and making sure that they're, they're working properly. Um, so we're, we're working on that and we'll continue to work on that um, because one of the things that we wanna make sure is that, um, God forbid we ever have any sort of um, COVID case that um, the cameras will help us um, identify who was on the buses, you know, just like it's important to have all the cameras working in the school. So we are uh, making sure all the cameras are up and running. Um, some of the bus routes to date have been consolidated based on um, things, based yeah. on, I think someone has their mic on, based on a, a number of things. If we're, we're only running 11 buses. Um, so right now the most recent change was we have the Pine Banks and West West run has been consolidated. Um, the West Run and the Gageville will now run together. Um, the bus routes will continue to be adjusted in order to make sure that uh, we all, the students are transported to where they need to go and as timely and as um, safely as possible. Um, late runs for Grafton and Westminster will begin in a few weeks. Um, so, you know, kids who need to stay after, you know, as the um, after school activities get underway, uh, we make sure we have the, the transportation home for that. Um, so I gave everyone a list of them. I'm not going to go through all the cleaning procedures that for each school as the board requested. Um, you have that in writing so you can take a look at it. As you can see is that um, each school, all the schools have a very um, detailed cleaning schedule and procedures that they continue to follow to make sure that the schools are being properly sanitized and cleaned. Um, they are being cleaned on a regular basis. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and they're um, having a really um, extra good cleaning on the Wednesdays where school is not in session, because if you recall, that was the purpose of um, not having um, kids in the building on Wednesday so we could give it a thorough cleaning. Um, and as, as the board can see from um, the, the detailed cleaning schedules and everything I gave you, um, they are definitely on top of that. And it's something that um, we continue to take very seriously not just in the schools, but in all the transportation as well. Hey, thank you, Chris. Um, before we get to the business office um, reorganization, I would like to ask you um, if we can get some of this information up on a public portal, because I think that there are members of, um, I think there are members of this community who would be very interested in what those cleaning protocols are. And some of them I noticed were quite detailed. And I would like to compliment all the principals for paying close attention uh, to that. I think that the uh, in, enrollment trends as well as uh, staffing trends are probably also uh, interesting topics for some members of our community. So I'm hopeful that we can um, increase the uh, flow of information to the public because um, one of the ways I believe that you build public support is making sure that your public is well informed of what the schools are doing and uh, what their tax dollars are buying. And I think we give pretty good value in Wyndham Northeast. Um, so we'd like to be able to document that as closely as we can. Yeah. And, uh, you're back, back to you, Chris. And I want to just stop. Uh, I, I do have a hand from uh, Priscilla. So uh, we're thinking alike tonight, Priscilla, because I was about to ask if there were uh, questions before we got to the business office discussion. Uh, Priscilla Lambert, you are recognized. Sorry, um, I have a question. You, you covered the enrollment changes, but with the going to the um, four, well, you're only going to four days a week, but go, trying to go to the four days, can you tell us if there's an impact on that? And can you also tell us what impact the governors and the Secretary of French or whoever opened it up that now the sixth grade is included in the same protocols as K through K through five was, so it's now been extended to K through six. So are we looking at possibly getting our sixth graders in there at the same time as our fifth graders when, when we do that with the middle school? Yeah, we continue, you know, all the sixth graders throughout the SU, um, whether it's, do, you know, yes, we, we're, we continue to look at um, 
you know, all the sixth graders coming back in throughout the, the SU. As far as the middle school, that's something we're, we're still working on with the sixth graders in space wise, but um, we're going to continue to work on it until we can figure a way to um, try to get the sixth graders back at the middle school as well, because what we really want, um, if we have all the schools coming back, all the schools outside of the middle school coming back and sixth grade is a part of that, we certainly want to do our best to make sure that we're, we're meeting the the four days a week for the middle school as well. But that's something you know, I'll continue to work on with Mrs. Bukowski at the middle school. Um, so yeah, we, you know, it, it, anything that we've um, updates from the governor and stuff and increasing the three feet to six feet, um, we're, we're trying to work with as we get the information. Um, in regards to the new enrollment, you know, the, it doesn't really impact because we're, we're trying to plan on um, the, the principals are aware of the, the increases that they have. They provided with me these numbers. So they're doing the best we can to make sure that we have rooms in the classroom um, for the additional students. Um, you know, some of the issues that, you know, we're seeing is that if we take out the teacher's desk space-wise, we're able to put an additional two desks in the classroom. So we're trying to utilize every aspect um, and space of the room as we can to get people back in there. So as they continue to loosen up the social distancing, we're, you know, we're happy about that. Um, and it, it is given us options to get kids more in the school. So like I said, right now, all the sixth graders throughout the SU, um, there's a plan for them to return. Um, we don't have anything solid in plan right now for the sixth graders, but hopefully um, shortly we will be able to have that um, include the sixth grade for the middle school. Follow up, Priscilla. Can I follow up? Um, yes, and does that with, with the lower things for the fifth and sixth, does that open up? for space-wise for thinking about the seventh and eighth grades as well, because with them with lower requirements, seems that that would allow more space to be used for your seventh and eighth graders. And the second question on this is, how are we coming with a teacher for Central? Um, we haven't really got down to the seventh and eighth grade yet. We're trying to take it one step at a time. Um, I think no matter you know how much we look at it, until they release all the the social distancing, whether it's three feet or six feet, it's going to be really difficult to get everyone into the Bellas Falls Middle School seventh, um, fifth through set through eighth grade. Um, but it is something we'll continue to work with um, to see, you know, how how that develops. But right now, I can say we haven't looked at the seventh and eighth graders. We're um, right now where our next step is to focus on the sixth graders. For the Central School, I think um, there's been a there's some candidates there, and they've been interviewing. Um, so. Um, I couldn't tell you right now. Right now, I know we haven't technically hired anyone, but I believe that um, Principal Kennedy um, is in the process of interviewing or just finished the process of interviewing. But we did we did have a few. I just don't know how they panned out. Okay, Chris, I would like to take a comment from Lynn Carey. I'm sorry, Chris. <clears throat> I'm sorry. But yeah, we uh, actually did offer the job to a candidate and um, we are... Uh, in the process of uh, the beginning process of presenting her uh, to Chris to get it approved, finding fingerprints um, from where she's currently had been working part time in a, a preschool. And so we're excited because that's really going to help out with having two third grades at Central. Fourth grade is also going to become a sticking point but um, we're hopeful for fourth grade and right now we're okay in fourth grade. So this is a big plus for Central, thank you. Thanks, Lynn. Chris, uh, sorry to interrupt you. Why don't you go uh, continue, please? Okay, and in that case, um, I'm gonna just check in and see if either uh, uh, Mr. Breyer or Mr. Benson uh, have uh, any questions so far. And done so far. Okay. Uh, Jason Benson. Good. Okay. Uh, Jason Terry. I do see your uh, hand. Now. Thank you, David. Uh, under the agenda items, there's a uh, number two under a update on quarantine staff by schools. I was uh, hoping Mr. Pratt could review that. Yes, I can jump into that now, if people would like. We're ready, Chris. So, um, going over, currently right now, we have, as of today, we have no employees that are um, 
self-quarantine through travel or symptoms. Um, in the past, we did have we did have a few. Um, we had Saxons River did not have any in the past travel or symptoms quarantined. Athens Grafton did not have any. Westminster did not have any. Central had one travel quarantine. Like I said, this is in the past that I'm talking about right now. Um, and they had um, two that were out with um, possible symptoms. None of, the, none of them came back as um, positive. So we have no um, cases of, of COVID. We're just looking at uh, being extra cautious in regards to um, any symptoms that may appear that we're doing our due diligence and having people stay home and um, get tested. And we're taking the directives from the, from the nurses. The middle school in the past had three for travel and had six for symptoms. Um, and so right now as a total in the past, we've had four travel quarantines and eight symptom quarantines. Like I said, no one's come back with, with um, COVID. They've all been negative. And the way we're doing this is that we have the online forms that all employees fill out. And we're really relying on the school nurses to make those decisions. And the, the employees reach out to the nurses and ask them what the next steps are. And so what we have um, come up with is that um, the Vermont Health Department has advised nurses not to treat staff illnesses the same as pediatric clients, meaning we don't follow the same pediatric, pediatric algorithm. If a staff member is out ill with symptoms that could be COVID, we are to refer them to their own physicians. Their physicians will determine if COVID testing is necessary due to HIPAA. We cannot require written documentation of COVID testing or for medical diagnosis. We can ask though for, um, for a physician's note that states they are under the care of a physician. The physician should indicate when it is safe for the um, health wise for that staff member to return to work. And these are the guidelines that um, WNASU nurses are following for staff members and the school community. So um, that's the update I have on COVID quarantines um, that we currently have. We don't have, currently we don't have any, but we have had in the past. And like I said, we're following the lead from the medical professionals, such as our nurses. And some of these, you know, looking into it, some of these quarantines that we have, um, they could have exhibited, um, you know, flu or cold-like symptoms, cough, sore throat. Um, so we're erring on the side of the caution and they stay home and they reach out to the pediatrician and uh, with the guidance from our school nurses. So we're, we're really um, trying to be um, hypersensitive in regards to what we're seeing. Thank you, Chris. Related question. How, how are we doing on substitute teachers? That's been a uh, kind of tough been, lately, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're doing the best we can, but it's just like any other school out there right now, it's really tough finding substitutes. Um, so um, yeah, it's not, it's not a bright spot in regards to um, if we have teachers go down, we, we and have to do have to quarantine. Um, we probably at this point, the very few substitutes that we have would have to rely on um, them teaching from home with their students and their classes. So yeah, it's, it's, not a, it's not a positive thing. We don't have a lot of large pool of substitutes that we can pull from this year. I think in the very near future, possibly the regular meeting this month, Chris, the SU board may want to uh, re-examine what the incentives are for substitute teachers. Um, certainly, um, uh, it's a seller's market now. Um, anything else, Chris, before we move into uh, the business office reorganization? David, I had a follow-up. Oh, yeah, sure. Go ahead, Jason. Uh, Chris, uh, thank you for that. Um, I know that before you know it, Thanksgiving is going to be right upon us, and I could have swore I read something uh, about holiday travel um, and things like that. Is there a plan in place to um, maybe coach the teachers? The, that's maybe not a, a great idea to travel in other red restricted areas. I, I, I could have swore I saw something from... Dan French or something like that. Uh, I was wondering if you could elaborate. Yeah, thank yeah, you, Jason. Jason. So, so, on on so on Friday, um, I'll be sending out a memo um, giving employees guidance and what they should, um, if they're traveling, um, what they should know, what they should do, and the impact that it could have on the classrooms um, if they 
um, do end up traveling to a red or um, yellow orange state. So that that guidance is going to come out on on Friday and sent out to all employees. Um, and in and, and hopefully um, we'll all be making good decisions in regards to traveling. Um, you know, we also have to take into consideration, we've already done this and started thinking about that is um, anytime that we're on a, a school recess, whether it's Thanksgiving or Christmas, we really don't know how many people are essentially going to be traveling outside of state into these different areas. And so we really need to be um, prepared for what that's going to look like and err on the side of caution. So I'll continue to work my administrative team um, and pick away at a plan for um, following up after vacation time when we know people are traveling and may not necessarily um, indulge that information. Hey, thank you, Chris. Um, I think it'd be- uh, Jessa, kind of has a, Jessa has her hand up. Oh, do you have a hand up, Jessa? Go right ahead, please. And then I'll recognize Priscilla. Jessa, I think you're muted. I am muted, sorry. Um, regarding hands up, are we using the raise hand function in the participant list or are you only looking at video hands? I was actually looking for uh, participant hands uh, when Jason pointed out that uh, you had a hand up. I had put it down at that point. Um, my first question was going back to the um, first issue where I raised my hand. Um, Chris, do we have a data retention policy for the bus cameras? Um, they usually, the bus cameras usually are on a loop and I think every 24 hours they, they loop over themselves. Um, okay. but yeah, yeah, that's, that's currently what the cameras are at. Okay. And then, um, one, plenty of employers, healthcare facilities and schools included, including schools with NEA unions have, um, no problem getting around the HIPAA requirements to require negative Corona tests. So I'm wondering if we can look more into that. Um, and then the governor's health order for travel includes exceptions for essential travel, which include things like work, food shopping, um, medical appointments. So anybody who ends up in quarantine because of travel to red or yellow state is doing discretionary travel, knowing that they're violating the travel order. And have we thought about doing any kind of bargaining um, or what are you going to do for Thanksgiving if people knowingly violate the travel order and then come back and ask for paid time off for quarantine time? Well, right now, all we can do is we're, we're currently following the, the state in the CDC rule, you know, guidance in regards to travel and, and even the additional. So they have to use their any sick time, personal time or vacation time they have um, before they can even apply for, you know, a portion of their pay beyond that. So right now, all we can do is follow what the guidance has come out from the CDC and the state and we're sticking. But the people that ended up in quarantine for discretionary travel were not following the guidance. Yeah, I mean, right now, the, looking at what they're were telling us, I mean, right now we have it that we can't control their travel at the school. And if they're going to travel or leisure um, and they have to go into quarantine, what it says, and I'm you know, sure you're aware of this, Chester, is that you know they need to tap into any personal sick leave and everything time. After that, um, they have the other, you know, the COVID family medical kind of piece that they can get a portion of their pay that they they would get up to a certain amount. Um, so th that's the tough part. We don't have any really way to control um, if they do decide to go away on a holiday and coming back. That's why we really need to, as an administration, we're really looking at what that looks like um, the week the week after um, people return because we're going to have to air in the session because people are going to travel. And we might not even necessarily know about it. Thank you for that. And I'm about to recognize Priscilla, but I do want to point out, I believe that in the information you sent out to board members yesterday, there was the uh, state's guidance on that um, as, as part of your uh, packet of documents. Do I re recall that correctly, Chris? Yes, that is correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, Priscilla, you had a hand up, 
I believe. In the past, although not an ideal solution or an ideal um, thing that we want to do, but paras have been used to cover those classes when as substitutes. And that was part of the contract. It was right in the contract that they could, you know, their pay, because it talks about their pay in their contract when they are utilized as, as substitutes. So I think before we would think about closing the schools or something, we certainly should be using them. I know that doesn't allow for all of the special ed supports that they would be getting, but if they were out of school, those kids would not be getting the special ed supports that they would be getting either if they were remote. So it would much be, be much better to use the pairs in a substitute situation than to close down the schools, in my opinion. Hey, thank you, Priscilla. I'm going to recognize Andy, who I think uh, has some comment on that. Andy? Um, thank you, David. While, while Priscilla, I, I understand that that's part of the CBA, I think that you well know that we cannot violate IEPs um, and underserve kids just because it's convenient for the school. So I would caution that we take an approach where we're taking uh, services away from students while I, I believe all students have a right to learn, I don't want to put the district or uh, the SU in any uh, situation where we are looking at having to um, spend money for compensatory services because we did not provide services for students um, so that we could keep school open. Um, so, response. Let me comment. Let me comment back because Andy, if you do not have substitutes and you have to close it, then those kids are not getting their services anyway. So you would be much better having them in the classroom with the para helping out and giving them as much service as you possibly could. And in a COVID situation, we have to look at that. And that's why I said that it is in there that they could be utilized. And I said, it's not ideal and I wouldn't want to do it. But if that's our only alternative, I think we do need to consider it. I respect that opinion, but it is a violation of FERPA or of, of FAPE, which is free and appropriate education for those students. Um, and so I would caution very strongly that we not go down that road. Thank you, Andy. Um, any additional discussion here before we move on to business office reorganization? Lynn Morgan. So I remember at when we were first talking about the opening up the schools, all the substitute teachers were going to be just used people that were already in the school. So are we now bringing um, outside subs in? Is that the way it's working? Did that make sense? Lynn. Yes. The, uh, it, it, the only school I know that has a, a regular sub coming in is um, Central School. So they have a sub that comes in uh, almost daily to help uh, and to, to serve the, uh, we've had a few, you know, absences. And, and so that's the only school I know. I don't know if the high school might, but I do not believe any of the other elementary schools have, um, of, uh, have subs on, you know, uh, a sub on call like that. Lynn, is that an adequate answer for you? Well, it just seems like different information, <clears throat> excuse me, different information that was given out at the very beginning where it said we weren't bringing subs in. They were going to try and do all the sub in-house, which I didn't quite see how they would do it, but it sounds like they've had to bring them in now rather than in-house. Yeah, we're at the point where um, we do need to bring people in, but we, we bring them through the, the checks and the health checks to make sure that um, before they even come in that we're in a safe place with having them enter the building. So we did have to adjust that. Okay. All right, anything else on, on this topic? Lynn? Uh, David, uh -huh. David, this is this is Cheryl. I've got my hand up. Uh, if yes. I can make a quick comment, thank you. Uh, the I, just a comment in general. The spirit of this discussion is really focused on the health and well-being and the education of the children and their teachers and everyone else that's in the school. I think it's 
prudent and healthy that Jason, for example, raised the question about the upcoming holidays and how might we be preparing for that. So um, all of this is very important discussion. I don't think we can get into much detail uh, about that now. I would, however, like us to look at, not to discuss now, but to look at the collective bargaining agreement with respect to the paraprofessionals and support staff. Having been on that negotiations team, I don't remember anything that said that a paraprofessional could step in for a teacher. There, It may be there, but I'd really like to review that. And again, all of this is about trying to be as prepared uh, as we possibly can uh, in order to support the health and well-being and the education of our kids and their teachers and everybody else involved. Thank you. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Cheryl. I believe I had a response from Lynn Carey, and then I would like to uh, sure. recognize Jack Breyer. David, you also have um, Jen Burke has her hand up as well. Oh. And okay. I was just pointing out that Cheryl had um, something to say, so... Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, uh, Jack, you would be willing to uh, yield for Jen sure. here for a few minutes? Jen, uh, Burke, you're on. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm the school nurse at Central. So I just wanted to um, just back up a little bit of the conversation about um, the holidays. Um, I think we're all focused on the staff, which is, I mean, I understand why. But I have to say that the staff overall have been very um, responsible with what traveling they've had to do. In my mind, it has been essential travel, whether it's been for, um, there's been a couple funerals, et cetera. So I don't see that it's been like leisure travel, at least what I've witnessed so far since the beginning of the year. I think the bigger picture, at least with the upcoming vacation and holidays is our students um, and where they may be going during the time that we have off. Um, or family that may be traveling into to our students' houses from red or yellow uh, counties. So I think it's important just to think about collectively the bigger picture than just the staff at this point. Um, and we do actually, Mr. Pratt just may not have been aware from this week, I do have one staff member currently out that's been out since Sunday night. She contacted me um, with very much like probably typical cold symptoms, but she did have a fever and she has still been out. So um, it, for me, it seems like it's pretty much, you know, week to week that we're fortunate that we only have her out and we do have that one permanent sub at this point that Dr. Carey mentioned that has been able to cover that class. But um, as we are just entering into flu season, there's a lot of things, not, not even COVID, most of the stuff I'm seeing in the building is your typical colds and some strep throats, but it's starting. So it's just, I think we got to look at the bigger picture beyond just the staff. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for pointing that out, Jen. It's very helpful for us. And we realize that the nurses uh, are doing uh, an awful lot of work keeping your buildings uh, safe and healthy. So thank you and thank all of your colleagues as yes. well. Thank uh, you. Jack, Jack Fryer. Yes, just want to point out that uh, our administration is somewhat constrained because we don't have policies about, about these things. And without those policies, we really are constrained by uh, both state guidelines and the CBA and really cannot act in a more restrictive capacity absent something from, from our boards in the way of policy. We were going to be having a policy meeting shortly. This might be a time to state for the record and have us vote on policies about travel, policies about uh, what is expected of staff, what is expected of students, what is expected of uh, the members of our community. I don't think it, that's the one way that you can put some teeth in things because otherwise, it really falls within the discretion of the administration and without any policy, they really don't have a lot. So I'm hoping that when we uh, meet, this will be front and center on our list because we don't have, we haven't modified our CBA and we don't have a lot in the, um, uh, in our policy book about this because uh, nobody thought about it. And so this would be a good opportunity to fix that. And uh, I think that's 
a uh, point Cheryl's making and a point that some of us have uh, made uh, in this conversation and separately. Chris, when will policy be meeting? I, I believe you're muted, Chris. Sorry about that. It's at the end of the month that our right before our regularly scheduled SU meeting at five, I believe. Okay, thank you, Chris. A anything else uh, before we move on to business office reorganization? Um, let's talk about what's new and interesting here, Chris and uh, um, uh, Ms. Pagan, Laura. Thank you. I'm scared here, everybody left, I'm alone. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, from our previous list um, that I informed them at in the last meeting of all the things that um, we have pending, um, I just want to just let you guys know everything that has been done already. And we're definitely every day um, learning new things and adjusting. I feel uh, really confident on the staff that I have right now. Um, our two newbies are amazing. Knock on wood. <laughs> um, really fast learners. Um, our data entry accounting clerk person, um, an audit report that we thought it was going to take him three weeks. He just finished it already in one week, which is really good for us. You know, now it's just moving forward with the new year. Um, so, from the previous list, um, I'm currently working with one of the districts, you know. Um, just to compare information and just be up to date with um, deadlines that might come that I'm not aware of or that the past already. So um, that's just a contact. So I can mentor with um, stat reports uh, was submitted already. We have um, SAR reports was submitted already as well. Um, tax invoices were sent to the towns and we're getting payments already. <laughs> not all of them were happy. <laughs> but I'm getting my checks <laughs> um, and direct calls got approved, which I was screaming, <laughs> you know, the staff was really excited about it. Um, I'm really happy that um, we got a lot of help from Bob from the state and I'm glad that the Department of Education understands where we're standing and how hard we're trying to bring everything together in the office. And they gave us that opportunity. So we got to prove in direct cause us FY20, but it's better than what we had that was nothing. Um, so I am meeting now weekly with our auditors. So that way we could complete FY20 and FY21 bank reconciliations, journal entries and cash receipts. That way we could both be on the same page and have all accurate information in the system. Um, grants bonds are entry and completed on e-finance. Um, currently for payroll, um, we're working really together as a team. Payroll is being done every Wednesday by um, evening. So that way, Thursday morning I post. Uh, I think the staff got spoiled a little bit. <laughs> I have people calling us then Thursday morning, oh, where's my paycheck? Uh, we post in the morning, you get it by five, which actually our deadline is Friday, but um, you know, I know a lot of people count on their checks. So um, the staff has been really good on finishing that by Wednesday evenings. So Thursday morning is just rolling. It'll be better now that I have our newbies as well. They're going to be working in one on one um, as well. It's been better because uh, we have the process in place now that staff needs to submit their time sheets by 10 a.m. on a Monday. You know, before I will have a staff member, you know, contacting the office and making changes Thursday evening. Meanwhile, we have to post payroll on, on Friday morning. So all of those adjustments have, have helped a lot, the staff as well. Um, warrants are being sent out and back, backup documents are here in my office. Still haven't got no visit of you guys, <laughs> but I have them here ready for you. Um, payroll uh, warrants are, are going out as well. So uh, I believe you guys did see them. I do have hard copies as well in my office. Um, warrants are here on Tuesday already after every Friday of payroll. Um, employee deduction audit for FY20, that's what's the project that um, Frank was completing for us is done. Now it's just a final review for um, that Joellen is gonna do just to be sure that all the information is accurate because at the end of the day, it's just his first week. 
So we just don't want to submit any information that is wrong. So it's like a double check, but the most important part in time consuming, he did it. Um, we changed benefits from physical year to calendar year. That way um, we get um, accurate information as well. Right now, Joanna has a master spreadsheet with all the employees information and categories. Um, this is just to have things more organized. It helps with contracts, stipends, mail merge, as well with um, the collecting bargain agreements. So that was a really good change as well that she implemented. Um, I'm working already on budget with the principals. I have um, meetings with all of them for the first week of November. So that way we could have that done as well on time. And hopefully by mid-November, we should be done with that. Um, we have um, updated um, accounts payable and reimbursement policies. We sent a refresh as well. We have a lot of people that were submitting, you know, for reimbursements for receipts of 90 days and over, which is, was affecting our budget because those are receipts as well that are from the past calendar year, not even current. So um, I did send out emails to let everybody know if they cannot submit their receipt in 60 days, they're not gonna get reimbursed. It's their responsibility to submit things on time because it affects our budget. And honestly, after 60 days, if they didn't submit the receipt, I guess they don't need their money, right? Um, so FY21 uh, grant budget was updated for land and for special ed. So um, all their information is in the system. And uh, we do have now free meal program that was extended um, through June 30th. And we updated all the information already and submitted our new application. So it's been <laughs> um, a challenging um, couple of weeks, but um, we'll get there. It'll take time, but at least with um, the most extensive um, and ASAP tasks that we needed to complete and reports that we needed to submit to the state, those things have been done. Thank you, Flora. Um, I just wanna observe that Colin James, high school uh, director has uh, joined the meeting as well. Uh, Chris had his hand up and I'm gonna just put one question out there uh, and then you and Chris can wrestle over it. E-finance, we had a lot of trouble with that um, in fiscal year 20. Do you, are you on top of that now? Um, so right now that's what we're doing. We, that's why um, we had Frank working on the um, auditing project, you know, just to be sure that all the information for employees and deductions were um, correct in the system. Um, E-finance is always challenging. Um, right now I'm sitting in meetings with other districts that are new, even though we are not new to it, I am. So I contacted um, Leslie and I was like, can you just add me to those um, webinars just so I can be at the same page as anybody that is new? Because even though our district is not, you know, I have two new employees. I am new. You know, Joellen is fairly new. So it's, it's a good um, refresh for those ones that have used it already and is um, a good um, starting point for me as well. I get to um, listen to other districts um, concerns and challenges. So um, it keeps me up to date on what's going on. Thank you, Flora. Back to Chris. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just want to take this time to, you know, Flora and her staff, you know, the two, you know, majority of them, all of them are new, except for two of them up there. As you can see, they've been working very hard, working, you know, trying to get everything done. Everything on that list that um, we presented to you that very concerning list that we presented to you at the last meeting. Um, they were able to get completed and um, check everything off that list. I think the biggest thing was the grants that we weren't going to get and um, her and her team were able to get us those grants. So I think it's a good indication that we have the right people in the position to do this. Um, they're keeping me informed every step of the way and they're, they're fixing the problems as they're uncovered and going back and fixing problems that we were unaware of. So I wanna thank Flora and her team because um, the proof is in their work and they're definitely getting it done. Flora, I have one more question for you. And that is, um, I understand it, it's considered to be a best practice in uh, finance administration that you cross train your team. And I realize with so many new team members, you probably wanna have them trained in their primary responsibilities first. 
uh, before you do cross training, but what are your goals for cross training, Laura? So um, for example, uh, I have right now, um, Jason is doing payroll. Um, the idea is that um, Frank is gonna do um, everything with the timesheets, but Jason is the main payroll person. So I wanted him to know all the um, steps that it takes to complete payroll. So right now he is just going from step one with Shauna, even though later on, um, Frank will be back up for him and do those timesheets. It is important for him to know every single step of it. Um, for example, Frank right now, um, so he is helping Joellen with the audit. So the idea of having him starting to help with an audit is because I felt that if he's able to find an error later on, it'll help him to avoid that error that he found. So I thought that the business approach was him to start with an audit, see how the information was already in the system, find those errors. So later on, when it comes to the point that he has to put, like for example, a new employee's benefit in system, he knows what he should be doing to avoid any of the past errors that we have encountered. Um, once um, he has completed that training with Joellen, um, then he'll sit with Shauna and he'll start doing um, the payroll aspect that he'll be helping with as well as um, he'll be helping Marlene. So um, that way if Marlene wants to go to Rome, <laughs> she's able to, cause we all deserve vacations. So the idea is for them to learn a little bit from each um, of the desks, but I, you know, I have confidence in them cause they're fast learners, but at the same time, I am trying to take it easy with them. Cause the idea is like I told them, I don't want you to do something if you're not sure of it. Because for me, it is understandable that you ask me a million questions, not that you have errors. We have too many errors in the past, so that is not doable for us. So if you're not sure, you will always contact anybody here in the office and we'll try to figure it out. So I think um, it's a great team, um, great em environment here. You've been here picking up the check. You, you've seen the change in the office. You know, we all speak together. We have now open floor. So it's better communication between all of them. You know, like I have always my door open and you can hear me speaking to them in my office. So we are working together as a team. That's the only way that we're gonna be able to overcome all the things that I've been finding that have passed. But so this one is just moving forward. Thank, thank you, Flora. Uh, Chris, I do see there's a hand up from Jen Burke. Is that an old hand or is that current? I'm not sure it came up afterwards. It might be a new hand. Um, I'm all set. Thank you. I don't have any new comments. Okay, thank you. Chris, back to I you. I do have a question, David, if I may, if, if that's okay. Yeah, let me just let me just uh, hear from Chris and we'll open it up for questions. Thank you. No, I think I'm all set, David. I think, you know, Flora said it all. It, it's just, you know, not only are they working together and getting things done, but you go up there, the whole environment has changed in regards to the physical space. It's much more welcoming. It's, you know, the level of professionalism that you see when you go up there. Um, it's very impressive. And I, and I would encourage, you know, make an appointment and stop by and see them. I have the warrants. <laughs> <laughs> okay, deal. Uh, I'm going to uh, recognize uh, my high school colleague, Colin James, and I'm going to go to my other high school colleague, Priscilla Lambert. Go ahead, Colin. Thanks, David, and uh, thanks for having me uh, participate in the um, the meeting. Um, Flora, my question to you is: um, the emails have been great. Um, I've even noticed from the the virtual uh, standpoint. Again, your emails, you're uh, you're responding on time. You're just very, uh, you're doing a great job. Um, you. My question is: is I, I was on um, the village board here in Bellis Falls for six years, and I know on that board. Um, we would get in our packet the, um, the orders, bills, and warrants prior to the meeting. So like board members could review them like a, a, as a hard copy, you know, and then any two would sign off on them. And actually that board at the time, everybody signed off on them. Um, my question is a lot of people don't get an opportunity to review them. And again, you, you've been sending the emails out to everybody. So I guess there's really no excuse. I guess all of us should be looking at them. Um, my question is not to add to your workload, but maybe it's at an individual board level 
that um, you know those could be attached to the packets. I believe they are an email, but sometimes a hard copy is kind of nice. But again, maybe that's I should be quiet and we'll bring it up at the high school because <laughs> each board should no. maybe so, bring it um, up. But so we had that concern before, and that's okay. why I um I have sent an email out stating you know that the hard copy of the um, warrants are here in my office to okay. avoid exposing all the employees. Whoever is interested in reviewing them to detail, they could just come in and they could just review them. Just let me know what time you're coming in just to avoid have too many people maybe just walking in. But right. they're all here in folders. They're here every Tuesday on the table and okay. you can sit and review them. The aspect of not having maybe a hard copy to scan it, we did try that approach. But the problem is that we will have to unstable every document. We want right. to avoid the confusion of anything getting lost as well putting it to the scanner, it gets stuck unless we're gonna get a, a another employee just to scan, which it would absolutely and I, I, they're sometimes they're and hard they're to always ready. Okay. Sometimes they're just hard to read like in a PDF file um, or whatnot. And again, I'm not I'm not blaming you. It's just that I think that's been the practice for they're hard to read. So but um thank you. I appreciate everything you're doing. So they are here. You can make an appointment. You just okay. send me an email. <laughs> I'll accommodate you if I'm not here. We have Marlene is here already at seven in the morning. You know, well, uh, have we have a special table for it. <laughs> we have white bees, we have hand sanitizer, we have comfortable okay. chairs. So we're trying to work it around to make everybody a little bit more happy. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Priscilla. Yeah, I'm getting set up Dropbox for some reason on here. I don't know why. <laughs> Let me get out of that. Um, for some reason, I was not able to get into any of the updates or any of the documents, and I've got to figure out why. It may be my computer, and it may be my problem. But And this partially might have been covered in there, but I know there was an uh, issue over grants, and I was wondering if you can tell uh, update us on the grants, whether we are getting all of the ones that we should be getting or whether we actually are losing some. No. So the issue that we had with the grants was the approval of the indirect cost. And direct cost is an application that we need to submit in December. The state follow up with um, different parties in the office that they were supposed to submit that application. And the state actually follow up all the way to February and um, the approach that the state got back was like, uh, we can't get to that right now, it's okay. Uh, when I found out that we weren't gonna get approved the indirect cost, which it was what I submitted last time as information in our meeting, um, I did work one-on-one after 17 emails with the state, we did get approved that last portion that we were waiting, which is the indirect cost. The only um, thing is that usually in direct calls, since you submit an application every year, they give you a higher percentage. But I did compare our uh, percentage that got approved, which is the same one that we got approved in prior year. Um, and compared to what they approve other um, districts, we just lost 1% maybe, or maybe 0.3. So it just depends on whatever we would have submitted, how much they would have approved. But, you know, some um, district got approved like 14.1 or 14.2. We still got um, 1325, which is not bad. And honestly, it's better than what we were going to get, that it was nothing. We need to submit again for that application in December, which is like, what, a month and a half away. So we were really lucky that the um, state, you know, cut us the slack and, and gave us the opportunity of just giving us the indirect costs but it was just that portion. Everything else, uh, Lynn was really good. Andy was really good submitting it. Honestly, that was the portion that the business office should have answered and they didn't, but we worked it around and we got it. Okay, good, thank you. You're welcome. So, we're, so we were uh, actually basically on track then. We are on track. Everything that has always been approved as grant wise for our district is in place, yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Chris, do you think we've covered the waterfront here on business office reorganization? We certainly heard quite a bit of how about how it works. Yeah, I'm I'm happy with how it went. It was as long as everyone else is. Not hearing anyone unhappy. Um, uh, we are down to five B, which interestingly enough is business manager finance reports. Um, 
floor if if there's more to say on finance reports or if there are questions um let's have the conversation but otherwise we can keep moving i think so um we are sending um automatic um the budget versus actual report i did um review that with one of the board members that um called me um and it seems that the report is better than um the other ones that we have used um, it is a self-explanatory. It shows you um, what we have budgeted and actual how we are spending. So um, all the information that is there is actually accurate. The information that we are adjusting as general interest is just balancing out um, whatever else we have in bank. But when it's coming to budget versus actual, we are up to date and everything is correct. Thank you, Flora. Anyone else? Okay, item six, old business, is the Lynn Law Report on the business office. Um, as noted on the agenda, that's gonna be an executive session item. Uh, new business, Chris, is there any new business? I don't have any new business, no. Okay. Um, director's comments. Uh, Molly Bannock. The only thing I have is I'd like to get the building committee started and I just need somebody to refresh me on who is on that so that I can at least get us all together and and get a plan on how we're going to at least look at some property. Chris, you can handle that? Okay. I think, I think he's got you covered. Why don't you get with... Uh... Uh, Chris and Nicole and uh, find a date that's going to work for uh, you and your committee, Molly. Anything else? I would like to thank Flora and her staff. Nice night. Good job. Great. Um, uh, Jason, you. Jason Benson, I believe I have you in the room still. Uh, any questions? Uh, comment? This, uh, I, let's call it director's comment. No questions, but again, I'd like to elaborate on Flora Pagan and her job with the business office. I think that sounds and certainly looks like it's coming together quite well. And I appreciate her and her efforts that she's doing. And also, Chris, good job in keeping everybody going along pretty well here. And I think right now it's we're in a critical time and everything is looking pretty good. Thank you. Thank you. Lynn Morgan. Yes, you reiterate what others have said so much thank you to uh chris and to flora for getting all of this pulled together and feels like we're starting to move forward in a more smooth manner okay uh uh george smith yeah i'm going to use uh, my director's comment time for um i had forgotten to mention this at communication and public comment but i um saw somebody from our community who has a, a child uh, with special needs, um, in intensive special needs. And she relayed that she was very thankful for the four days a week um, uh, in school. She, she luckily has a job where she was able to, last year, able to bring her to school, uh, uh, to work rather, um, but uh, not others have that flexibility. So she just wanted to relay her feelings that um it was she was grateful for that so just wanted to pass that along thank you thank you george uh brenda farkas i just wanted to say it was refreshing to hear um the business reports and she gives no meaning to hitting the ground running <laughs> thank you brenda uh colin james Oh, they lose Colin? I may have. Um, all right, uh, Cheryl Charles. Well, I'd like to echo the thanks. You know, Chris, the, the newest reports we've gotten from you have been very, very helpful and detailed. So a special thanks for that. I'm sure that involves Lynn, Carey, and others on the staff as well. So thank you. Thank you all. And I'll echo uh, everything that's being said about the business office. I had tremendous concerns, and they are being addressed. 
Uh, I want to thank Flora for her patience with all of us. Actually, patience with everyone as she <laughs> has been dealing with all the details and the unwelcome surprises here and there. You're, uh, I'm very pleased at how quickly you have pulled together a team, a comprehensive team, and uh, we we are making progress. So thank you. Um, very much for all of that. And I want to add another thank you. Again, I'm thinking locally, and this is not easy for everyone. And back to what Jen Burke said uh, earlier, um, the the teachers, the staff, the personnel, are the principals are all working so hard, and it's going well. I mean, I'm I'm just hearing so many positive things, and we can't take that for granted. It takes enormous effort and integrity. We all need to keep listening and doing the best we can. Uh, and it's just a, a time of kind of careful um, um, and watchful behavior on all of our parts, but at the same time, real gratitude for the integrity with which people are handling all of this. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, Priscilla Lambert? Uh, yes. Um, once again, I think our teachers are really, really doing as much as they possibly can with the restrictions that they're being placed of only two days a week. So I know a lot of them want to get that education to their children and educating children takes more than two days a week. So I am pleased to see that we are at least trying to move forward some. I would encourage continuing to look at options for different spacing, whether we have to get buildings. I know the middle school um, principal was saying, well, we don't want to put it on the Well Street playground because that uses our playground. But we could also put put some up um, at the where the high school is. They have plenty of land and be able to put maybe even our eighth graders in buildings up there. So that's an option to be looking at as well. There are other options I'm sure that people can come up with so as to get those children in school because that that is our responsibility as a board is to educate our children. And if we're not getting them in school and not being able to keep them there, then we are not fulfilling our responsibility. Um, so keep plugging away at it, guys, and just keep doing the best you can. Thanks. Thank you, Priscilla. Um, Jack Breyer? Uh, uh, nothing for me tonight. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jack. Uh, Jason Terry? Good, David. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Jessa West Clark? Um, yes. Actually, somebody um, here in town texted me during the meeting to say that Flora is killing it and she was a good hire. <laughs> Um, not to pile on the praise of Flora Pagan, but she is doing wonderful and I don't hand out praise um, as freely as other people, but it has been from a business office perspective, even though we're in the middle of a pandemic, this has been a better year than last. Um, and that says a lot. Thank um, you. And then I think things are going well, our reports we're getting are good. Um, and the only thing I can say to Priscilla's um, drive for in-person instruction is that educating children does require innovation at times. Um, and I think our staff is actually doing pretty well with that. Um, there's other ways to educate kids and they're, they're working on getting that down pretty good. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Jessup. Um, date of uh, next meeting, Chris, that will be the 28th, am I correct? Yes. Okay. And there will be policy preceding, and we'll notice policy uh, committee members and uh, other board members as well, I presume. Uh